Seen here is an adult female jaguar atop a riverbank in the Porto Jofre area of the Pantanal in Brazil. She is looking for prey. At just this instant, the female jaguar has spotted a potential prey item. It is the large member of the rodent family known as the capybara, which can attain weights in excess of 45 kilograms or 100 pounds. Alas, the great feline's attempt to capture this capybara ended in failure. Let's look at that attack again in slow motion. We can see here that for an instant she has the capybara almost in her mouth and between her forepaws. But somehow the capybara slipped away and escaped into the river. It is doubtful that this jaguar feels especially bad about having failed at capturing the capybara. Certainly, she is in very good physical condition and has clearly had her share of hunting success. And she knows that the Pantanal is rich in many prey items, including capybaras, caimans, and deer. Jaguars are the largest cats in the Americas and the only representative of the genus Panthera. Height at the shoulder may be up to 75 centimeters. That's about 30 inches. Body length is 150 to 180 centimeters. That's about 60 to 70 inches. Or about 5 to 6 feet long, with a tail ranging from 28 to 36 inches long. Jaguars weigh between 68 and 136 kilograms. That's about 150 to 300 pounds. Do note, however, that male jaguars in the Pantanal can reach 150 kilograms, or 330 pounds. Note how the coloration and spot pattern of the jaguar enable it to move very cryptically through the dense vegetation here on the riverbank. This blending in with the environment is a characteristic of the various habitats that jaguars occupy. Notably, the jaguar's natural camouflage is most effective in dappled light. Jaguars are powerfully built with large square jaws and prominent cheeks. They have lean bodies and muscular limbs. They are built for power, not speed, although they can run briefly. A jaguar was observed dragging a 34 kilogram sea turtle, that's about an 80 pound turtle, about 300 feet or 91.5 meters into the cover of a forest. 
However, jaguars of the Pantanal, being generally much larger and stronger than those of Central America, can carry prey considerably larger than these turtles we just spoke of. Thus, Pantanal jaguars can move even large deer and tapir kills. Jaguar base coat colors range from pale yellow to reddish brown, with black rosette-shaped spots on the neck, body, and limbs. The belly is off-white. Black or melanistic jaguars are fairly common and are the result of a single dominant allele. These jaguars have a base coat color of black with black spots that are usually dimly visible against the black background. Melanistic jaguars are more common in the forested habitats. The largest jaguars are found in the Brazilian Pantanal, where the average males are about 220 pounds and the average females about 160 pounds. That's 100 kilograms and 76 kilograms, respectively. However, male jaguars of the Pantanal, as large as 150 kilograms or 330 pounds, have been documented. The smallest jaguars are found in Honduras, where males average 57 kilograms, or about 130 pounds, and females 42 kilograms, or about 90 pounds. In general, jaguars found in dense forests are smaller than those found in more open habitats, possibly because densities of large ungulate prey are greater in open habitats. Male jaguars are generally 10 to 20 percent larger than females. With regard to habitat, we can note that jaguars prefer dense, tropical moist lowland forests that offer plenty of cover although they are also found in scrubland, reed thickets, coastal forests, and swamps. Jaguars are excellent swimmers and are generally found in habitats near water, such as rivers, slow-moving streams, lagoons, watercourses, and swamps. They are not typically found in arid areas. Jaguars have been reported from as high as 3,800 meters, or about 12,000 feet, in Costa Rica, but they are generally not common in montane forests and are not found above 2,700 meters or about 9,000 feet in the Andes. In northern Mexico and southwestern United States, jaguars are found in oak woodlands, mesquite thickets, and riparian woodlands. These felines stalk their prey on the ground, preferring thick vegetation for cover. Jaguars are also able to climb trees for safety or to hunt. They require three habitat characteristics to support healthy populations. A water supply, dense cover, and sufficient prey. Not a feline species that is in any way intimidated by water, this female jaguar has entered the river to hunt Jacare Cayman, a large and common crocodilian of the Pantanal. Jaguars have a large distribution. As New World cats, they are found from southern Arizona and New Mexico, south towards northern Argentina and northeastern Brazil. However, populations have been substantially reduced or eliminated in some areas, including El Salvador, the United States, and large portions of Mexico. Jaguars currently encompass a range of approximately 8.75 million square kilometers, 
or 46% of their historical range. The largest contiguous distribution of jaguars is concentrated in the Amazon basin and includes portions of the Cerrado, Pantanal, and Chaco areas to the south. This range extends north and east to the Caribbean coast of Venezuela and Guianas. Populations have been reduced primarily in northern Mexico, United States, and northern Brazil, and southern Argentina. Populations have been extirpated in the Argentine Monte region and the grasslands of the Pampas. Jaguars are not typically found at high elevations, such as Pantepui or Puna montane grasslands. Although along with the jaguar, the Jacare Cayman is one of the large predators of the Pantanal, it is also a major prey item of the jaguar. The Jacare Cayman is an ancient creature that lives in Central South America. Their numbers are so extensive in the Pantanal that they may represent the world's largest single crocodilian population. Although they do eat piranha, the name piranha caiman is also used for them because their bottom teeth are easily seen, like those of piranhas. While all crocodilians, crocodiles, alligators, caimans, and gharials being included, eat fish, many focus on certain species. Jacare caimans forage in mats of floating vegetation looking for aquatic snails. They crack open the snail shells with their powerful jaws and the shell fragments are dissolved with their strong stomach acids. Not a great deal is known about the social behavior of Jacare caimans. They are fierce predators. To hunt, they lie still in the water and attack when their prey approaches the shore. Generally, they are solitary animals that congregate during the mating season only. They are nocturnal, being active during the night. Jacare caimans are, of course, carnivores. They eat mainly fish, especially piranha, birds, reptiles, and small mammals. They also, of course, feed on the snails that we just mentioned. Illegal hunting in the 1970s and 1980s was the main threat for Jacare caimans. Organized poaching, for example, in Brazil, is still one of the primary threats to their survival, along with habitat destruction. According to the Animal Corner Resource, the total population size of the Jacare caiman is around 100,000 to 200,000 individuals. Currently, this species is classified as least concern on the IUCN Red List. Here is the large rodent, known as the capybara, that we earlier saw the jaguar unsuccessfully hunting. Capybaras are the largest rodents on Earth. They can weigh more than 100 pounds, so 45 kilograms, and grow to be 4 feet, or 1.2 meters long, and 2 feet, 0.6 meters tall. They are much larger than their guinea pig relatives. They have a heavy, barrel-shaped body which sits on relatively squat legs, shorter in the front than in the back. Their brown fur is coarse and sparse enough to reveal the gray skin beneath it. Capybaras have partially webbed feet, which enable them to propel through the water or swampy areas. These webbed feet, no doubt, were put to considerable effect in allowing the capybara that we saw earlier attacked by the jaguar swim away once it entered the river. The giant river otter, often referred to as the river wolf, is a species in the weasel family, the Mustelidae. It is endemic to South America. The 
The giant otter is the world's largest otter and largest member of the Mustelidae family. It attains a length of up to 6 feet, 1.8 meters. The giant river otter only lives in three river systems, the Amazon, Orinoco, and La Plata. With a streamlined body and webbed feet, this otter is a great swimmer, well adapted to both terrestrial and freshwater environments. The giant river otter eats mostly fish and crustaceans, but will sometimes catch small caimans and small anacondas. Due to their similar diets, they actually compete with jaguars and larger adult caimans for prey items. The giant river otters are such efficient predators because they have whiskers that allow them to detect vibrations in the water column, helping them to locate prey. And they have a voracious appetite, as we can see here. These otters consume about six to nine pounds of food a day. Regrettably, as the giant otter is such an effective predator on fish, it is occasionally shot and killed by fishermen. As can be seen here, the giant river otter is a very social species. It lives in family groups with offspring from multiple breeding seasons. Giant river otters create dens by burrowing into riverbanks or under fallen logs. They are also very territorial and mark and patrol their home areas, which may span up to 12 square kilometers. That's 4.6 miles squared in area. Although limited almost exclusively to aquatic ecosystems, the giant river otter, like the jaguar, is a top predator in the Pantanal. As such, the giant river otter therefore controls prey species population sizes to help keep the river ecosystem in balance. They are also good indicator species, meaning the population health of the giant river otter is representative of the health of the entire river ecosystem. According to the International Union for Conservation, that is, the IUCN, the giant river otter is endangered and considered extinct in Uruguay and likely extinct in Argentina. The otter's decline is mostly due to hunting for the pelt trade that peaked in the early 1970s and habitat loss, which together led to the local extinctions across this otter's range. Protective actions in the 1970s removed the economic incentive for hunting and halted all commercial hunting shortly thereafter. The recovery of the giant river otter has not been so swift, however. There are certain traits of this species that limit its population growth rate. The otters are slow to reach reproductive maturity and have low cub and juvenile survival rates. And though it may seem they are widely distributed on a continental scale. They only occupy 1 to 5 percent of a given watershed. The areas they do inhabit, rivers and creeks, are threatened by overfishing, modification of otter habitat for green energy development, such as hydroelectric dams, which will result in habitat loss, and mercury poisoning from illicit and unregulated gold mining and other forms of water pollution. 
We observe here a jaguar once again hunting along the riverbank, looking, of course, for caiman and capybaras, among other prey species. Of course, many other species share the Pantanal habitat with the jaguars, jacare caiman, and giant river otters. Here we see the Maguari stork, an unmistakable species given its size, very long bill, and red legs. Note the bare red face and piercing yellow eyes. This species is mostly found in open wetland areas, including swamps, pastures, rice fields, and mudflats. Wattle jacanas are water birds characterized by their striking plumage and extremely long toes and claws, which enable them to walk with ease on floating vegetation and on the leaves of water lilies. Polyandry, that is, females mating with more than one male, is common among wattle jacanas, with a reversal of the roles of sexes. On that point, it is the males that both incubate the eggs and raise the young. And the father wattle jacana, seen on the right here, is taking care of the juvenile, seen on the left. And here we once again observe a jaguar that has entered the river to hunt for caiman and perhaps also capybaras. The striated heron is a very widespread small heron species, common across much of the globe. Small size and overall gray color separated from most other heron species and bitterns. The striated heron is normally solitary, found standing quietly around wetland habitats such as marshes, agricultural fields, rivers, and lakes. The rufescent tiger heron is a medium-sized heron found around swamps, marshes, and sluggish streams at low elevations. It is usually seen singly. Adults are distinctive with their bright rufous head and neck. Juveniles are buffy with uneven black barring. The green kingfisher is a small kingfisher with a disproportionately long bill. It is dark glossy green above with white throat, collar, and spots on wings. The tail is often held cocked up. White outer tail feathers spotted with green conspicuous in flight. Males have a rufous breast. Female breast is white with spotted green double collar. Green kingfishers are found along rivers or ponds. They are less conspicuous than some other kingfishers, often perching on overhanging branches close to the water surface. Here seen scavenging on a jacare caiman carcass is a black vulture. This is a large raptor. It has a uniform black color with silvery patches on undersides of the wingtips. Clearly the scavenging activities of this species make it a key player in maintaining nutrients at higher trophic or feeding levels within the ecosystem. With regard to jaguar reproduction, we can note that females in estrus venture out of their territory to call during the morning and late at night, advertising for a mate. Males answer those calls with their own vocalizations and travel to her territory to mate, leading to competition between males for that mating opportunity. 
It is not uncommon for a female to travel with one or two male jaguars during estrus, although a dominant male will usually drive a smaller male away. Females do not tolerate the presence of males after mating and especially after their cubs are born. the gash under the male's left eye. Clearly, reproduction, though a powerful driving force, will leave this male with some long-term scars. The estrus cycle is usually 37 days, with estrus length of 6 to 17 days. Estrus may be indicated by behavioral changes such as lordosis, flemin, vocalization, rolling, and increased scent marking. Males may show an increase in androgen levels throughout the year, but hormone levels peak during the time of receding floodwaters in some areas. Jaguars may produce offspring year-round, but mating typically increases during the months of December through March. Most births occur during the wet season when prey is more abundant. Females give birth to one to four offspring, though they usually have two, after a gestation period of 91 to 111 days. Female reproductive maturity occurs between 12 and 24 months. Males become sexually mature at 24 to 36 months. The ring kingfisher is the largest kingfisher in the Americas. It has an exceptionally enormous bill and raucous calls. Blue-gray with shaggy crest, white collar, and rufous belly. The male and female are similar, but note different breast patterns. The entirely rufous on male, while the female has blue-gray banded bordered by white. This species nests in burrows excavated in banks, generally along water courses. The southern screamer is a huge and odd-looking gray goose-like species with long red legs. Note the wispy crest on the back of the head the bare red face, and a broad dark color with a thin white color above it. It has a very loud and far-carrying call. <coughs> the conservation status of this species is least concerned. The great blackhawk is an uncommon resident of forest, marshes, and mangroves, where it is usually greatly outnumbered by the similar common blackhawk. It is slightly larger and lankier than the common blackhawk as well, with longer legs and tail. Notably, adults of the two species also have very different calls in flight. This juvenile great black hawk appears to be scavenging on a fish head. The savanna hawk is a beautiful orangish raptor with a widespread distribution across Central and South America. Overall, it is cinnamon colored with dark barring on the underparts. The upper parts are darker brown except for contrasting cinnamon shoulders. In flight, note the white tail band 
and mostly cinnamon flight feathers. Singles or pairs of the savanna hawk are found in open habitats, often perched conspicuously on a fence post or treetop. When hunting proves not as productive on one side of a river, the jaguar will readily swim to the opposite side of a river, even a very large river. We knew this jaguar to be a mother who left two cubs on the side of the river where she had just been. She will forage and return to them later in the day. A few weeks later, she was observed with her cubs out on the riverbank. The cubs were developing very well. Giant river otters can hunt the fish so effectively in these murky waters because their very sensitive vibrissae, that is, whiskers, detect the movements of the fish. However, perhaps even more intriguingly, the vibrissae can detect the electric fields produced by fish. With these fish detecting capabilities, the giant river otters are very effective fishermen indeed. Let's just now relax and enjoy the antics of the very social giant river otter. The Pied Plover or Pied Lapwing is an elegant plover of sandbars and muddy areas along rivers and around ponds. It is sometimes placed in the genus Vanellus. An uncommon bird in Brazil, it is seen ranging in well-dispersed pairs, rarely in small groups. The Pied Plover feeds by running forward in short bursts, pausing to pick at prey. It wades only infrequently. Although we did not see the jaguar cubs, we can note that the cubs are born with their eyes closed and completely dependent on their mother. Their eyes open around two weeks old. Cubs nurse until they are five to six months old, at which time they begin to hunt for food with their mother. They depend on their mother for protection from predators, for food, and for guidance and teaching as they grow. Offspring are dependent on their mother until almost two years of age.
Jaguars can live 11 to 12 years in the wild. Illness, accident, interaction with other animals, or hunting are major sources of mortality. In captivity, jaguars may live over 20 years. Jaguars are strictly carnivores. They eat a wide variety of prey. Over 85 species have been reported in the diet of jaguars. Preferred prey are large animals, such as peccaries, tapirs, and deer. They also prey on caimans, turtles, snakes, porcupines, copybaras, fish, large birds, and many other animals. Jaguars typically attack prey by pouncing on them from a concealed spot. They either deliver a direct bite to the neck and then suffocate their prey, or they instantly kill them by piercing the back of the skull with their canines. Their powerful jaws and canines allow them to get through thick reptilian skin and turtle carapaces. Jaguars then drag their prey to a secluded spot where they eat them. It is notable that of all the big cats, the jaguar has the most powerful bite force. While on average, the life expectancy of jaguars in the wild is about 12 years, there are known cases where jaguars have lived for 15 years as competent hunters. Jaguars are top predators and keystone species in the ecosystems they inhabit. The implementation of laws protecting jaguars has improved in recent years. Jaguars are also an important source of ecotourism and come to local communities where jaguars might be observed, such as here in the Pantanal. Jaguars are considered near-threatened by the IUCN. They are considered endangered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and are on Appendix 1 of sites. Many populations remain stable, but jaguars are threatened throughout most of their range by hunting, persecution, and habitat destruction. Jaguars are persecuted, especially in areas of cattle ranching, where they are often shot on site despite protective legislation. In the Pantanal, ranchers are believed to kill at least 200 jaguars a year. One way you can help to improve jaguar survivability in the Pantanal is to plan a jaguar safari here, as this provides financial incentive to preserve this unique feline species.